Yesterday, I rented a motorcycle and I drove around the island. I went to that tourist trap called the Mayan Ruins. I think I was the, the last people there were the Mayans. <laughs> then I continued on to the far side of the island and I found the best restaurant in the Caribbean. Best food, best location, best drinks, and best music. So invite me for dinner and I'll tell you the whole story. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> so welcome back to Havana Blood. This is our presentation on detoxification and live cell analysis. Now, before this started, we did the before blood test of three people, and they volunteered as a human sacrifice. That was very nice of them. <laughs> I'm going to show you some blood tests, some before and after blood tests uh, throughout this presentation. So you all know the website, which is? Doctorwithin.com. Very good. Do you think that there's a necessity that we all detox occasionally today? The European Chemical Agency estimates more than 144,000 man-made chemicals in existence. 144,000 man-made chemicals in existence. These are, most of these are since the Second World War. Our U.S. Department of Health says this. 2,000 new chemicals are released every year. Most have never been screened for human health safety. Sounds like the vaccine industry, right? There's your note number 68. It's a group of physicists. It's their website. Uh, you'll have to go to chapters, notes, seminars, live nutrition. That's the source of all these notes in brackets that you're going to see. Here's a quote from World Health Organization. They estimate that 12 million people, or one in four, die every year from diseases caused by air, water, and soil pollution. That's also your note number 68. So in case I forget to say this, my personal contention is that anyone over the age of 40, let's say, even if you are in perfect health, have no diseases, you have plenty of energy, that we all need to do a detoxification at least every year or two, just because we are, we are subject to this passive contamination from the air, the food, and the water that we're exposed to. Now, we're gonna be, do you guys know about the 60-day program? How many of you know about the 60-day program? Okay, a couple. Foreign to life, foreign to life. That's what xenobiotic means. It means anything that does not promote the, the physiological benefit of your, the cells of your body is known as xenobiotic. And that, in addition to all those chemicals, we also have to take into consideration the vaccines that we discussed at length the other day. Refined carbohydrates, white sugar, white flour, pasteurized dairy, Genetically modified foods that are completely foreign to the human species, they've only been around since the late 90s. It's a brand new experiment on you. Hydrogenated oils in foods, it's like in everything. It's in all the snack foods. So I, I have a complete chapter on each one of these subjects. We're going to be going over the details of the 60-day program during this presentation, but hydrogenated oils are what makes all snack foods last rather indefinitely. It's why you can accidentally leave the bread out on your counter for two weeks, hidden behind the toaster, and then all of a sudden, two weeks later, you go, damn, look it, I left the bread open, and then you stick your hand inside the bread, and it's, hey, it's still good. It's not still good, it's still <laughs> spongy. And no self-respecting roach would go anywhere near it because there's nothing for him. It's inert. In addition to that, corporate confinement animals. How many of you have seen the movie Food, Inc.? Yes. Yeah, so that tells that the majority of turkeys, chickens, pigs, and cattle are kept in inhumane, sequestered type of environments, like chickens, for example. All Colonel Sanders' chickens, they live exactly 49 days. They never see the light of day. They cut off their beaks, cut off their claws, and they're in the same place for 49 days. That's, don't even get me started. That's all in 
Food Inc. Okay, so this is why organic meats, I mean, even Costco, even Safeway is, is seeing the advantage of the demand for organic meats. So if you eat meat, make sure that they're organic. It's becoming more and more of a critical issue. Remember when John was talking about the, the classic guys who were the authorities, the medical doctors, a century ago, and how eloquently they wrote? Well, first of all, they actually had an education. There wasn't all this noise. They had no internet. Plus, there was such a thing as a liberal arts education where they all started out and they knew the English language, they knew other languages, they, they knew science. That's why they wrote so well. This guy's one of my heroes. I'm always quoting him, J.H. Tilden, M.D. His masterpiece is called, a little book called Toxemia Explained. Here's one of the quotes. All so-called diseases are increasing symptom complexes due to repeated crises of toxemia. Toxemia just means blood poisoning. Right. Toxification, yes. Mm -hmm. These diseases have no independent in existence. As soon as toxemia is controlled, they disappear unless an organ has been destroyed. So his thesis is that blood toxicity is, is the only disease. And all the other ones are just, all the other names that we have for diseases are just names that we have made up for different manifestations of this etiology. That's his thesis. There it is, your note number 69. And the disease is named for whatever inflames first. So it's like this, leaky gut syndrome. We all know what that is. We eat chips, fries, donuts, all the fast foods, all the foods that we cannot metabolize. They sit for a while in our stomachs. Our enzymes cannot break them down because the human evolution has never ev ev been able to create a digestive en enzyme that can recognize hamburger helper or curly fries or cheesy whatever. So it just sits there in our stomachs for a while. Reflux, more than 20% of the population has reflux esophagitis. The food comes up. Eventually, by gravity, the food drops down into our small intestine and then finally into the large intestine. But as sludge builds up along the walls, along the, the lining of the colon, month after month, year after year, the pores in the colon, whose primary job is to resorb water and minerals, uh, these pores, they atrophy. Some become locked open, some become locked shut. So since we still have all these processed foods with no enzymes and some of the pores are locked open in the colon, these intact man-made processed fats, proteins, and carbohydrates are allowed to leak into the systemic circulation. Now remember this, once in the blood, digestion can no longer occur. Digestion cannot occur in the blood. At that point, these unmetabolizable, inert, man-made non-foods are free to take up residence in virtually any organ or tissue. First, inflammation, chronic inflammation, degeneration. So that's the short version of what J.H. Tilden is saying in that book, but I really recommend, it's just a short little book, Toxemia Explained, J.H. Tilden. So here are some of the foods that we know that are not in the 60-day program, right? <laughs> soft drinks, potato chips. Okay, soft drinks. If something says sugar-free, does that mean it's okay? Oh, I can eat this because then I won't get fat <laughs> and I won't get diabetes. No, I always say when you have a Diet Coke and a regular Coke, drink the freaking Coke. <laughs> Why? Because what is aspartame? It's a chemical made in the laboratory in, in the 80s this researcher, was, he, he was actually creating a heart drug and he accidentally licked his finger and he's like, damn, that tastes sweet. That was the beginning of aspartame. <laughs> I have a whole chapter, so it was always a drug. It was never, never saw the light of day, never grew in the ground. Just a chemical, it's just a chemical. Unfortunately, it's a neurotoxic chemical. In my chapter called Sugar, the Sweet Thief of Life, 
the whole second half of that chapter is the history and physiological effects of aspartame. So please look at that when you get a chance. But, I mean, this whole, this whole brainwashing that people have, especially, uh, especially young women have this about, you know, office workers and things. Oh, just get me a Diet Coke. Just get me a Diet 7-Up. Don't do that. You know, if you want the soft drink, drink, drink the original one. It, it just has high fructose corn syrup, right? You can't digest that either. But the aspartame in the Diet Coke and Diet 7-Up is definitely neurotoxic and carcinogenic. Donuts, hydrogenated oil snacks. So in the 60-day program, there's no hydrogenated oils. If you don't know what that is, how can you know that to exclude it from your diet? Because you have to read the labels of everything. And it doesn't always say hydrogenated oil on it. It, it says other things. It'll, it'll talk about canola oil, cottonseed oil, uh, soybean oil. Sometimes it says hydrogenated, other times it doesn't. And there's other terms for it as well. Just remember, if it doesn't, okay, if it doesn't go bad, that means it, ha it's, it has hydrogenated oils. You go to Paris, you buy the baguette. The baguette is supposed to be hard as marble, you know, by 9 p.m., okay? That's bread, okay? The, the, bre the bread that we have lasts for months and cannot even nourish the insects in your house, right? Of course, there's no insects in your house, right? Okay. The butter margarine controversy, we will now solve it once and for all. No more margarine in your lifetime. It's hydrogenated. Only raw butter, unpasteurized. Mayonnaise, sorry, unless you, you made it yourself of all you know, organic ingredients, no more mayonnaise. That is completely processed. All it is all it is, is flavored hydrogenated soybean oil. Just like, just like all, all creamy, all commercial salad dressings are the same thing. Here's your salad dressing for two months. All right, ready? Lemon juice or lemon juice or some kind of vinegar. That's it. No vinaigrette. No oils in the 60-day program. Diet soft drinks. Diet anything. Anytime you see sugar-free, you can't have sugar-free anything. No Nutrisweet, no aspartame, no Splenda. Those are drugs. They're not nutrients. They have no nutrient value. They have negative metabolic value.